In today's video, we're gonna check out some more creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. If you had a coffee mug, the amount of space in that coffee mug has enough potential power to boil off all the oceans of the world. Nikola Tesla called it the infinite energy field. That was mastered decades ago. Once you get it tapped, it's just flowing. That means that every home, business, car, manufacturing, village in Africa would ha be able to have a, a device that would generate all the energy they need for all the needs that we have for a modern civilization. There's no pollution, there's no radiation. And once you have the system, there's no cost. The problem is, you know, if that technology were to be disclosed, it's a, you know, it's a quadrillion dollars in proven assets, oil, gas, coal, that are obsolete. That's what they're protecting. This, this technology has been around for, for decades. About a hundred years, there has been empirical evidence of this energy field. I really hope one day we do rediscover the infinite energy glitch because that would be pretty nice. Now there's certain ways to work around the electrical grid to maintain your own electricity, but to have free forming power that actually can power your whole house, everything in your house completely off grid, I would like for that to come back. It's a shame we lost Nikola Tesla because he was definitely onto something, but the government shut him down. And I think that that happens quite a bit to this day with people that do make these mass discoveries. But we'll see what happens in the future. Leave a comment on what you guys think. They have something in, this, in, this, in space on a satellite called the Rods from God. This is a satellite that I know of that exists. This satellite has 20-foot tungsten steel rods on it. These tungsten steel rods have no warhead, but when it's positioned over any country or any city, it can be released to within a millimeter of the point where, of impact, and it'll decimate that entire region using kinetic energy. So how do you think they get these countries to fall in line with what they want them to do? Imagine you're a country, and you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to be able to do whatever, whatever you want, and you know that this thing is hovering above you and we say listen if you do it we're going to drop one okay we're, we're, we're not going to do it we'll stand down we'll stay third world we won't rise up to second or first world we'll stay back we'll stand down they give them a little bit of money give the leader a little bit of money maybe install a puppet dictator you know that thing's over your head and the avatar project they have actual field robots and where a, a soldier is in a bunker somewhere maybe even a thousand miles away has a symbiotic consciousness link to the robot to control it the robot has ai plus its own link so it can make decisions and you can control it still they have the craziest tech so what if all of the countries were to stand up against like that threat and what what would happen would they just wipe out the whole world or would they just submit and be like, well, we kind of been caught. So here's what's happening. We're the world leaders and you're going to obey us regardless. <laughs> it honestly, sounds like something straight out of a G.I. Joe movie. If it is a real thing, that's pretty terrifying. I personally do believe that we have laser technology up in the sky that can beam energy to eliminate whatever we need to eliminate at the time whether it's really powerful or not, or can actually like scan through a whole continent to wipe out the continent, I don't know. But I do believe we have energy weapons in space. And as far as the Avatar suit goes, I think that's pretty cool. And it leads me to my own theories of aliens also having said suits. In fact, they probably operate off of them suits. Why? Would they risk themselves in this situation and not just send an android suit that they can control with their mind down to Earth or wherever they go? Even Musk admits it's a lot to take in. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> Let me play it back for you. Watch right here, right in, in the live feed. Bam. Do you guys see that? Let's look at it again in slow motion. Check this out. Okay, did you guys notice where the green screen came on? Check this out right here. Look at the background behind the car. I'm going to show you where he actually truly is. He's not in space. Let me show you where he truly is. Check this out. Okay, now here the car is at the Space Center uh, just before the launch, supposedly, supposedly. Now, see this thing surrounding it? This is your green screen, your simulator. That's all it is. See this background right here? Does that look familiar? 
Look at it again. As you can see, the background is identical. He's not in space, people. It's all just a bunch of fakery to deceive you. Now, check this out right here. See how he's just turning in one spot? He's just turning. That's a green screen around him. He's just in one spot turning. And it even showed you, I even showed you in the footage before, he's on this little platform. It's got a little track on it and just sits there and makes that car turn. As you can see right here, see that little track down at the bottom of this thing that it's sitting on? Yeah, that's all that thing does is sit there and rotates. You've been fooled, people. It's a lie. It's a hoax. I find this extremely funny because it does look fake. A lot of people say that the moment where you can see what looks like a garage or a green screen, a lot of people say that that is the shuttle that launched the car into space, opening to eject the car out into space. But to me, that definitely looks fake. I could be wrong. Leave a comment on what you guys think, but that looked pretty fishy to me. Personally offered me $2 billion to not pursue what I was doing. Someone in the photo lab took a picture of a picture. It's an extraterrestrial on a, on a dissection with a group of doctors and what looked like some suits in the background. Yeah, arms, Fingers, legs, head, the head is covered with a towel. Apparently it was badly mutilated. Um, it had a weird, almost like a spine uh, on the front. Like we have a sternum that you could see like a bumpy thing. Um, different hands and feet, not tiny. Uh, I think it was around five feet. It's hard to tell from this photo. I have the documents. I have the trace landing. I have the U.S. military Air Force people's testimony that were there. When, when one of these, uh, in this case, it was an extraterrestrial vehicle, not one of the man-made ones. So we call them ETVs for the ones that are of extraterrestrial origin. There were three of these man-made UFOs, ARVs, alien reproduction vehicles, hovering in this hangar. If what Dr. Greer is saying is completely true, it wouldn't have done him any good to take that $2 billion, no matter how enticing it sounds, because along with the $2 billion would have come with a whole bunch of rules, like, you know, delete your kill switch and things like that. And he would have probably become unalived if that was the case. But I think if what he's saying is true, I don't know if it is, it could be all make believe. But if what he's saying is true, it would be super hard to pass up, but he just couldn't do it because they're gonna get you in the end. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this pretty much every day. Do you see this? Do you see this? It's freaking nature and it's freaking awesome. Woo! It's hard not to see it. The evidence of our mud fossil and petrified past can be found everywhere. And it really truly is amazing just how many people are waking up to this fact. And much like the mud flood, once your eyes are opened, you see it everywhere. And with that, all these newly opened eyes are bringing forth more and more evidence daily. It's the one good thing that social media has brought. True citizen journalism. Opened eyes and open minds catching what they see in this world and finding the beautiful truth that holds. Like the fact that geology is nothing more than hardened biology. Mud Fossil University on YouTube. I highly recommend checking it out if you want to learn more about mud fossils. Question everything, friends. Until next time. I always find the mud flood theory extremely fascinating, especially when they show like big turtles and dinosaurs or whatever creatures are that looks petrified or when rocks look like slabs of meat when they're cut. Like that straight up just look like bacon, but they're apparently rocks. Or it could be old petrified giant remains that we're just carving into thinking that it's stone. <laughs> Gone. Particle stabilized. They should have picked a different t-shirt. Just move it over my skin. A circle of wire, male to female, connected at that end. I'm going to take it all the way from the back. I'm going to move it all the way through the front. And I'm going to turn it side on. 
and do the same again. Get the ring, put it behind it, all the way to the front. Now I'm going to go over the top, down and pull it from the side. Absolutely no string. And the other thing is when I turn the switch off, it's going to drop. This is pretty cool. I am starting to not believe it to be a true tractor beam. I've had some people in my last video basically tell me, you know, it's not really a tractor beam. Uh, but there's more videos of this individual online where he has perfected this device. It's more of like a magnetic sound vibration type of machine. It's not really a true tractor beam if you look up the actual definition of what a tractor beam is. But it is still really cool and interesting nonetheless and possibly future technology that can be utilized in different circumstances. Do you know that trees, yeah. if there's an insect that is on that tree, based on the insect saliva, the tree can tell what kind of insect it is. And then it will release a chemical into the air that would draw the predator of that insect to the tree. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. It will also release a chemical in the air to alert the other trees in the area. Yeah. And so when that insect goes to the other trees, they've already been alerted and, and they've changed to... the taste of their leaves so that when the insect bites it, it doesn't like it. That is insane. This is real science. If this is a real thing, I would be very curious as to what is the taste that the leaves are excreting to make insects not want to eat them. I know mosquitoes are kind of like blood suckers. But there is certain repellents that repel mosquitoes away. I just wonder if it's the same type of reaction. Where are all the stars? As fake as those stars looked at the beginning, they just better off not having stars at all because that just looked fake. If that was a real video, a real shot of NASA footage, that just looked not real at all. I don't know if it was just a odd perspective for the, the camera, but the stars were flickering like they were going out, malfunctioning. The background looked weird. Like that, that wasn't real, right? Hyvä. Keskity. 
Shiva! Hey, this was a pretty fun video. Whether it's real or fake, I can't say. I feel like it's not real. I could have been string evolved into this situation. But hey, if it's not, this is pretty neat. Different species, different life forms. There's one species that at full adulthood is about a foot and a half. There's another species that's 10 or 12 feet. The ones that people often refer to are around three to four feet. 39 inches or so tall. Uh, we have um, very good forensic drawings from men who've been on the retrieval teams of what these various species look like. So the reason they keep coming back, number one, it's not a coincidence that the modern era of all this started when we started detonating uh, uh, atomic bombs. What Edward Teller and Oppenheimer didn't understand when they were developing that is that when you detonate an atomic bomb, you get Everybody knows about an electromagnetic pulse, the pulse that goes out, knocks out all electronic communication. What people didn't know about is there's also a pulse of what's called scalar energy. And scalar is faster than the speed of light, a catalog 69 different species, different life forms. There's one species that at full adulthood is about a foot and a half. There's another species that's 10 or 12 feet. The ones that people often refer to are around three to four feet, 39 inches or so tall. Uh, we have um, very good forensic drawings from men who've been on the retrieval teams of what these various species look like. So the reason they keep coming back, number one, it's not a coincidence that the modern era of all this started when we started detonating uh, uh, atomic bombs. What Edward Teller and Oppenheimer didn't understand when they were developing that is that when you detonate an atomic bomb, you get, everybody knows about an electromagnetic pulse. You know, I often wonder if there is extraterrestrial life and for some reason they're monitoring us, whether it be the Anunnaki or God or whatever it is out there, it makes me wonder if they do observe our capabilities. For example, if we ever gain the ability to travel the speed of light, I have a feeling that we would be either rewarded or knocked back by an extraterrestrial entity because we're either ready for it or we're not ready for it because we're too aggressive. If there is aliens out there, I, I have a feeling they're not aggressive like we are. I feel like they're just watching us and making sure when we do reach our technological capabilities that we're ready for what's beyond our capabilities. So it wouldn't surprise me if when we did start setting off nuclear bombs, that we were getting monitored by these extraterrestrial beings being like, eh, I don't know if they're ready. They still have a hundred some thousand years to go. Yo, a new thing infecting your body just dropped. This is absolutely amazing. You've heard of bacteria. You've heard of viruses. And if you're smart, you've even heard of viroids. Well, let me introduce you to the obelisk, the new life form hiding inside of humans. While these are smaller and more simple than traditional viruses, these are still capable of transferring information that can be read by your cells, your human cells. Scientists had no idea that these things even existed until now, and while they are capable of transmitting information to your cells, we have no idea what that information is or what it does to your overall health. These new obelisks inside of your body are tiny bits of RNA or genetic information. Now, unlike viruses, the obelisk are unable to create and manipulate proteins. The only thing they seem to be able to do is to give information to your cells. What that information says and what it does to you is completely unknown. It may be completely harmless or it may be profound as far as human medicine goes. I would have really liked to have seen the microscopic view of these obelisks that are inside of our body. I think that that would be pretty neat to see. But it's interesting to know that we might have something in our system that no one was aware of. And the next question is, is how did we get it? Was it already there? Did we inherit it from different microplastics or what? Like, I would really like to know a little bit more about this particular topic. Watch. Watch closely. See the O? You see? Look. You see? You see them two that going down? One by itself with the joint. Look, watch. See? The joint going by itself. You see one by itself in the joint. Y'all see that? For the earth if you see it. Now, I'm going to show you that 
they do they deciphered this wrong. Because as you can see here, don't look at the indentation. See this? Don't look at the indentation. Like I said, I, I touched these. Don't look at that indentation no more. Look at the space between the indentation. And you'll see a three, right? Follow me. You'll see a Z. Look in Jean with an E. You see that? You see those letterings. It starts popping out to you like bubble lettering. You'll even see a mound little thing, John, right here. And mountain ranges in the back. You see that? This is a map. You don't, you don't go by the indentations and read it. And you came up with the whole in Lil and Enki story and got Bill Carson running around talking about in Lil and Enki Anunnaki. I'm showing you that the true Anunnaki is here. And I will show you how to read the God languages. And this is it. You don't, you don't, you don't. You remember the crash and being blasted with shattered glass. You will waken, but not into reality, but in the void of space. Aside from one of those that they've shown, I'm assuming that they're saying that, that these are not supposed to be solid objects. There was one planet that they showed. It looked like it might have been Pluto, but they showed a bunch of galaxies and nebulas. And I, I'm pretty sure that galaxies and nebulas, if they exist, because I don't know if space exists, I think it does. But if galaxies and nebulas are evolved, I'm not sure they're supposed to be solid objects. I'm not sure. Leave a comment down below letting me know because honestly, I do not know for certain. But only one of those was a planet. And to say if the planet's solid or not, I really can't say. But at least the other ones in this video were like galaxies and different nebulas. This will amaze you. The BBC's literally admitted the Anunnaki were here and taught us in ancient times. Now look at this arguably the most interesting, most sophisticated mathematical document from the ancient world. It tells us that past civilizations understood mathematics a lot better than we thought. In so he goes on to say that the uh, Anunnaki, and I say Anunnaki because if you have a look here and then look at Enki, you'll see that uh, the only the main Anunnaki got actually carved. There was no point in carving you know, Joe Bloggs from down the road. So this, they actually animate an anarchy. Uh, they have different hats, which tells you who they are. So Enki's got the turban style one. Um, I'm not quite sure who this one is. Could have been Nuggle or someone like that. But basically, uh, they knew Pyagra theorem before, obviously, Pyagra went there and learnt it. So yeah, Anunnaki taught us with evidence. I'll have to look this up on the BBC to see because I don't know if they actually said that the Anunnaki were a part of this or if it was inspired from the Anunnaki. But I, I'll have to do a little bit more research on this. If any of you guys have any information or seen this uh, article or whatever this is, leave a comment down below like inciting me and inciting everyone that reads the comments because there's a lot of very informed individuals out there that watch these types of videos and it's nice to learn a little bit better than what these videos here show so leave a comment Houston we have a problem I've always wanted to say that and now I can next giant leap will also start right here in Houston orbiting aboard the International Space Station right here in Houston this Houston? Yeah, that's right. Johnson Space Center. Go down to Building 9, go to Street View, and go inside, and you'll see a mock-up of the International Space Station. But it's perfectly accurate, down to every wire. And we're going to explore these rooms together. And I was walking through these rooms, and I started to notice that, uh, hey, I've seen this before on the live feeds. And I noticed something out of my peripherals. And I said, wait a minute. Wait, what? I've seen that before. Ah, 
There it is. I knew I'd seen that before. And whoa, a lot of magical things happen right here in Houston. Oh, and look at that right here in Houston. That looks familiar as well. Seen a lot of shots filmed with those little flags. Popular area right here in Houston. But wait, I see the ISS in the sky all the time. Well, you might want to check out my pinned video on unconventional propulsion systems. Well, it looks like the world is a stage, and when it comes to NASA... I personally, if you've watched enough of my videos, I'm sure you know that I'm not a huge fan of NASA. I think that it's a money laundering company, and I think that they do a lot of hoaxes. Not to say space is fake, and that they're not doing stuff up there, or doing stuff for space, but I think that the stuff that they show us as the community that supports this business, they show us this stuff because they feel like they have to. Even though it's so fake. I, I have no clue why. Like, just don't even show it at that point. Just take really good Photoshop pictures and give it to us. Eventually, they're probably going to start using, like, the new AI-generated videos to make lifelike videos of space so that we can debunk that those are fake. Y'all, have you checked your electric bills lately? Well, I have. And in the app, it said that I'm using most of my electricity heating my house. Well, guess what, y'all? Our only heat source in our home is a wood freaking stove. So what am I paying for every month? $400 electric bills for what? Oh my goodness. If I had to pay a $400 electric bill and all I was using to heat my house was a wood burner... There would have to be some explanations going on because that's just ridiculous. My electric bill's kind of high for what I think that we use, but to be honest, I run a pretty big computer. I have a bunch of monitors. This room alone runs on a lot of electricity, a lot, and I can understand why my electric bill is pretty costly. I try to keep my heat down and my air down because everything seems to be pretty cool in here and or warm when needs to be. But $400, things have to change and the business needs to be talked to because that's just not right. Not one of these people are real and someone may have actually just proven this. So this guy right here is James Gates. He is a theoretical physicist and extremely, extremely clever guy. He's at MIT with a bachelor degree and two PhDs. So yeah, he's, you know, got pretty good credentials. Now what he found was literal computer code embedded in reality. Now this is where we get into something called string theory, which is a bit complex, so stick with me, I'll explain the best I can. So first of all, you've got Einstein's theory of relativity, everything big like planets. Then you've got quantum physics, which is literally the opposite, so everything small like particles, atoms. And in this area, the general rules of physics don't apply, things, you know, like gravity. Now, Einstein's theory and quantum physics, they do link together with the Big Bang. Literally like everything that is big now, like the planets, all used to be small. But these two needed something to link them together, and what is that? That's where string theory comes in. String theory literally links in quantum and general relativity. Now, string theory suggests, like strings on a guitar, they vibrate at different frequencies, right? String theory, the strings vibrate in different waves of matter. Now, this literally changes the way you look at everything in the whole world, because everything you see, every particle, is essentially a string vibrating. Everybody on Earth is just a particle vibrating at a different frequency. So what's this got to do with this James guy and the computer code? Well, thanks for sticking with me. Let's go. So Dr. James took a look at a sequence of codes that came from string theory. And he found binary code. Like actual binary code. This is literally only used by things like computers to compress data. It's what powers all of the search engines you use. The hub. Google. So it literally proves if we break down matter and energy far enough, we can find actual computer code in our reality. So does this mean we are genuinely living in a computer simulation. This is a very interesting topic because I've never heard it broken down that way. I would need to read the study on this individual that found the code in reality because I feel like if there really was a code in reality, people would be breaking that code a lot. Unless it's an extremely difficult code to find, then I have a feeling people would be hacking reality quite a bit and for that being said, would that mean that we are in a simulation? That's a pretty good question if that's the case. Once people start hacking reality, say someone wants to do an infinite money glitch where they can open up a porthole in the sky and money starts coming out gold. And that would be a hack in the system. They're literally manipulating atoms to fabricate gold 
to be in their presence. That would be a huge game changer on the idea, are we living in a simulation or not? I think at that point, yes, probably so. Please, please, for the love of God, please disprove this photo right now. This photo, 700 miles away, you see in the Alps of Switzerland from a mountain that is 3,700 feet tall, 700 miles away. That is 40 miles of curvature missing. 40 miles of curvature missing. Please explain this, Globies. Please explain this. I literally, honestly don't think people understand that the fact that you can see too far is literally evidence that you do not live on a globe, that Jesus is real, the Bible is true, and that you have no evidence besides NASA CGI photos that propagate to you every single day. Oh yeah, and they spend $60 million of your tax money every single day to drown you in the fact that God isn't real, the Big Bang exists, and aliens are coming to get you, and asteroids might come and kill the Earth. Sorry, don't believe it. Goodbye, next, dismissed. Please disprove this photo. Oh yeah, you can't. You can't. For me, curvature theory on the flat Earth or globe Earth, it's a struggle for me to really grasp because I have so many questions about the curvature itself. According to science, the the Earth is somewhere in the lines of 20,000 plus miles round. If that's the case, I feel like it would take a lot more than 700 miles to really truly start to see the curvature of the planet. Can you see what's beyond that mountain range that you see in the distance? You probably can't because the curvature has finally taken its effect after you've been so high up on the mountain, if that makes any sense. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think because I could be completely wrong on this, but to me, it just makes more sense that you're going to see a further distance because you're up high. And uh, according to this photo, they're on top of a mountain. Okay, so we're gonna go over a couple of videos that were sent to me by some subscribers. If you guys want to send any videos to me that's within the conspiracy or theory realm, please send the videos to my email right here. It's dominickanominick at gmail.com and with that you can send all the videos you want as long as they're decent videos nothing too vulgar nothing too violent I'll definitely review them and we can react to them on this channel this video is coming up from a subscriber her name is Diana that's what she wanted to be addressed as she doesn't really have a YouTube channel or anything like that but she did send this video clip of a series called Dexter oh uh, it's about a serial killer that kind of defeats the bad guy but he's the bad guy type deal i'm sure you've heard of it and in this clip there is a fruit of the loom logo with a cornucopia so we're about to take a look at this clip So there definitely wasn't no audio to this because of copyright reasons, but you could definitely see that not only was there a cornucopia behind that logo, it was not necessarily a Fruit of the Loom logo, but that was definitely a logo that had the cornucopia. So that was definitely a logo that had a cornucopia in it. I'm not certain if that was a Fruit of the Loom logo, and maybe that's where we even got the idea that there was a cornucopia behind the vegetables and fruit in Fruit of the Loom, but I'm not 100% sure if that was really a Fruit of the Loom logo. It was just very ironic that they even mentioned the cornucopia in that shot. So this next clip is by another subscriber. Her name is Angel Power One. This, this video in particular is just a demonstration of where she lives and the surrounding area of how everything looks because she has a lot of weird happenings that happen where she lives. And this is just a showcase of the area and surroundings of where she's seeing these phenomenons. So let's take a look. I mean, this is the southwest side that I keep showing of where I keep showing you where I see these things. 
And those are the mountains that I show in the night vision and stuff. That's where I see stuff is over there. Southwest is over there. So you get a reference of daytime of what it looks like. So you know. I, it's February 16th and I watch this. It's crazy. There's all kinds of things in the sky. I don't know what they are. But then, watch what I get. I just happened to catch it. I saw that light, so I zoomed in on it. It's probably an airplane or something. I don't know. And then watch after I was watching this. I just happened to catch it. It was nuts. February 16th, 2024. Watch this. Man, what is that? Okay, watch it again. Watch it again. It's coming again. That's that's so weird, guys. So weird. I'm not gonna lie, that was my first time actually watching that video completely all the way through. I always try to keep myself uh, blind reacted to these videos so that I, I have genuine reactions and opinions about them. At first I was watching it and I'm like, okay, that's definitely uh, a plane going off to the left. The other one's not sure. But the, the moment that that thing fell, I don't know what that was. That could have been a shooting star. That could have been failed equipment. That could have been an actual UFO. I wasn't expecting to see that ball of solid light just right down like that. That was pretty interesting. I really like that. I think that this area that you live in, Angel Power, is really neat. I, I actually am kind of jealous. I would like to have a mountainous view range and everything like that. I think that would be awesome. Unfortunately, I do not have any more clips that I can show from Angel Power because they are TikTok links. And every time that I go to the TikTok channel, I've been saying videos are unavailable. So if you're watching this Angel Power, um, there's something that's stopping me from viewing the videos. I don't know if they're private. I don't know what's up with that, but there's something that's keeping me from viewing them. So if there's either another way you can send it, either through YouTube or or some other way, just the video itself through email, that'd be completely fine. But for some reason, your TikTok has got no videos on it, and it will not allow me to view anything on it. So unfortunately, I can't show any more of these videos because Angel Power has sent me quite a bit of videos, and I would be very interested to see them. Uh, so just make sure you can try to fix that. Leave a comment down below letting me know that you have it fixed, or uh, send me YouTube clips instead because I'm very interested in what you have to show. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. And with that being said, have a good day.